Hi everybody, it's Peter Bernstein, a senior editor of TMC Net, and we're back with another edition of Analyze This, and today we're talking unified communications, UC, and I, we're being joined uh, by my good friend and colleague and analyst extraordinaire, Blair Pleasant, who is the president and principal analyst at ComFusion LC, LLC, sorry Blair, and also was co-founder of UC Strategies. Uh, Blair, welcome. Uh, I appreciate you joining us. Let's start with the obvious uh, and do a level set and talk a little bit about what, what we're defining as UC because we're going to get into this when we, when we start looking at the components of it. So what's your definition? UC is communications integrated to optimize business processes. And what's important to understand is that UC isn't a single product. It's not one thing. It's a solution made up of lots of different components. So there are things like uh, mobility, collaboration, conferencing, uh, call control. You know, some people call it the IPPBX. We've been calling it. Uh, unified messaging. Even lately we've been adding things like social media. So it's not a static thing. It's it's continually growing. Uh, the the real important part is presence. So being able to see someone's status and availability and also having that unified user interface. So regardless of what type of device you are or where you are, you're going to have that same unified user interface to use to uh, be able to access your UC tools. The marketplace seems to finally be taking off. Can you explain that? I wish I could. I, I think part of it is people have gotten used to some of the uh, things that we've been talking about for a long time. You know, the whole idea of consumerization of IT. A lot of these things that we're using now in the business actually started in the consumer world. So we got used to things like unified messaging and instant messaging. So things that we used in our personal lives have come into the office and we're more used to it now and we're more comfortable with it. Things like mobility. You know, we're all mobile now. We're all out of the office, um, traveling all the time. So having the mobile capabilities that workers need has really uh, increased the need for unified communications. And also the need for collaboration. Again, we're all dispersed. People work in different locations, different geographies. So the need to be able to collaborate with colleagues, um, co-workers, partners, uh, customer suppliers, regardless of location, those things have really drive the need for UC. So I think it's been easier for companies to uh, rationalize it and to recognize why they need to deploy these capabilities. You guys um, at UC Strategies have done some really groundbreaking work that I'd like to share with our viewers about the different parts of UC and, and I was wondering if uh, you could walk us through the two different versions that you see and what the value props are for them? Sure. So we came up with two different types of unified communications. So the first is UCU or UC user, and that focuses on the individual user, the individual worker. So that looks at things like presence, IM, unified messaging, uh, some basic mobility capabilities, things to help the worker be more productive and efficient at doing their job. So things like click to call, being able to look at your buddy list and see who's available and simply just uh, click on them, on their name, and be able to initiate um, a a, a phone call or even a conference call or a video call or a collaboration session. So those are great for helping the individual worker be more productive. The other type of UC is UCB or UC business process and this is where we talk about things like what people call CEBP or communication enabled business processes where you're tying in or integrating the UC capabilities into the business processes that people are using in their jobs. So that could be CRM or ERP, it could be uh, something like an inventory shortage application, um, an R&D type of application. So tying in those UC uh, capabilities so from within that application you can uh, see who's available, uh, click to connect with an expert, uh, initiate a conference call or web sharing. So you're doing that from within the business process or application that you're using to do your job. So it makes it much more efficient and it makes, makes people more productive. And we also found that the, the ROI that comes from uh, these two different types is vastly different. So it's, it's really hard to justify unified communications based on UCU. You know, people talk about, you know, being able to save 20 minutes or an hour. You know, that, that's fine, but that's not really where the value comes from. The real ROI comes from integrating in with the business processes. And uh, my colleague Marty Parker and uh, Don Van Doren, they uh, actually analyzed a lot of uh, customers and case studies that they were working with, and they found that 
the difference between UCU and UCB is, is tremendous. So you can save you know, a few thousand dollars a year uh, or a month by using UCU, but when you're using UCB and integrating it as processes, you can save you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and um, also make a lot more money. You can get products out uh, to market faster. You can um, reduce the sales cycle a lot faster. You can cut down on quality defects. If you have UC uh, Unified Communications tied into um, a quality assurance type of application, you can cut down on the, um, the defects and fix things a lot faster. So the ROI is much more definitive when we talk about UCB. There's this big bang for the buck for going to UCB. What would you recommend to them as they go to sell their management on why this is a great idea? Well, the first thing is to understand your business processes and what you're trying to accomplish and what the challenges are. So you need to define where you want to deploy unified communications. It's not something that you're just going to do across the board initially. So you want to start with trials and pilots. Uh, so you might want to pick either the users or the business processes or the departments that could benefit from it the most and that would be a good place to start. So you might want to start with your tech savvy people or you might want to start with your um, mobile employees. So start small and um, what we say, don't try to boil the ocean. So think about the use cases that can most benefit from unified communications. Then it's also really important to get the evangelist, to get that um, cheerleader on board, someone who's really going to uh, understand what unified communications can do and try to help them work with um, the end users and also the CFOs and the CIOs and the people who they have to work with. But really understanding the end user needs and getting the end users involved early on because if they're not engaged and if they don't understand the value of it they're not going to be using it internally and even though I talked about the ROI of UCB being a lot more uh, easy to define for some companies I recommend starting with UCU you know starting with some of the basic capabilities like presence click to connect and IM let people get used to unified communications let them feel comfortable with it start seeing how they can use it what benefits they're getting from it and then after that then you can start integrating it and uh, deploying it with the business processes this is about buy-in and it's not just the end users it's also the executives I think that um, the time is ripe I, I hope you agree we are at a tipping point and, and doing nothing is no longer an alternative. The market numbers show a strong growth and uh, you know, we had a little bit of a downturn for a couple years but uh, I think for the next few years we're definitely going to see significant growth and a lot more activity going on in the unified communications and collaboration market. The time is now to start looking at UC and actually start implementing it. Uh, the value is there. And for Blair Pleasance, my guest, I want to thank her once again. And uh, we will see you on the internet the next time we do analyze this. Mm -hmm.